That's what's up! Woo! Yo, I feel alive! <laughs> It's a rainy day outside, but you know what's great for rainy days is Audible. They are giving away a 30-day free trial membership to everybody right now if you go to audible.com slash fungbros or text fungbros to 500 500 right now. You know they got a huge variety of audio programs and audio books that you can listen to right away, right off of your phone and your computer. More on that later, but right now enjoy this video about Pike Place Market because I catch a fish. Yo, what's going on everybody? Andrew from the Fun Roads here. I am in downtown Seattle right now in front of the very, very iconic Pike Place Market. Now, I grew up in the area and I've been here a few times, but to be honest, I don't know much about it. So today I'm here with a group of foodies, yappies, and a professional tour guide, and we're about to find out what really Pike Place is. Let's go meet the crew. Hi, my name is Nelson Young. I'm a class A Yaffe, according to Andrew. I'm originally from LA, and now I live in Seattle, and I'm roughing the town. Hey, I'm Tiffany, AKA Feed Her on Instagram. I'm born and raised in Seattle, so shout out to all my local foodies. Hi, I'm Sonia from Seattle Bites. I'm originally from New York, but now I'm roughing the Northwest. 2017 Zagat Award winner, so you know my food game is strong. All right, everybody, that's the crew for today. We're about to hit up seven of the most iconic spots around Pike Place, and we're meeting our tour guide, Justin, at spot number one. Are you guys ready? Let's, Let's go. go. We gotta take a picture at the most Instagrammable spot in all of Seattle, which is the gum wall right here. This is our tour guide, Justin, for the day. What's happening, everybody? So what's the first spot? First place, we're gonna go place right here called Daily Dozen Donut Company. Started in 1990 by two sisters, Stu and Barb, who had a dream. Build a business selling any donuts, but they had some help. The Donut Robot Mark II. Wow. They make 30 DPM. That's 30 donuts per minute. Yeah, I got the donuts here, but most important rule of all on a food tour. No leftovers, all right? This is a food tour, not a food diet, all right? I love it. Get in there. Cinnamon and sugar powder donut okay. from Daily Dozen Donut Company. Dig in, right. y'all. Awesome. It's so light and fluffy, and then because it's warm, you can't get any better than this. It's warm and fresh and coated in sugar and cinnamon. It's perfect. The ultimate mini donut. It's not too large where you're feeling guilty, but it's delicious. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty crucial that Justin has the pink umbrella so we never lose it. Did you know that the term Greek is not regulated by the FDA or any governing body in North America for that matter. Well, you can call anything Greek. Essentially, yeah. To make authentic real Greek yogurt, to get that rich, creamy, thick texture, these large companies are taking shortcuts. They're adding cornstarch, they're adding thickeners, they're adding things that are not part of the traditional yogurt making process. Right? So well, that's why we are blessed here in Pike Place Market. We have Elanos Real Greek Yogurt. Family owned and operated. They started right here in Pike Place. And they take low margins just so they can show us a real Greek yogurt. Oh, wow. This one here is the, called the Marion Berry. Okay. The other one's Passion Fruit Real wow. Greek Yogurt. If you post a photo of Elanos Yogurt, you'll get like 100 likes right away. It's like such a hands down Seattle favorite. Straight magic. Wow. Is that like cheesecake without the guilt? Exactly. That's oh. exactly what I think. I want to eat this with that donut just now. Oh, oh that's a good call. Like just former uh, fat guy thought right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Inner, <laughs> inner, inner fat guy thought. Seattle is a diverse place. You know, people have been coming here from all over the country, all over the world since 1851. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, uh, we lost two thirds of our Japanese American farmers. That's a huge loss. This mural is reflective of that by Aki Sagabe. It depicts the life and flight of Japanese American farmers. After Japanese internment, none of those original Japanese American farmers ever returned back to Pike Place. So imagine building generations of wealth and losing that, right? That's, that's a tough loss. And so we want to remember that history. Especially with the Asian community, like I think it's important to know that they actually helped build a lot of this city as well. Now we gotta go try some Pike Place chowder. <laughs> Pike Place Chowder is a, uh, over seven time award winning New England Clam Chowder. They've won many awards, including awards in the East Coast. That is really good chowder. Ain't that good? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Awesome, right? They get fresh seafood from the fishmongers for their daily market special. Best chowder in Seattle. This is the here. seafood bis. So, this is another award winner here. It's pretty much the whole ocean. You got shrimp, you got lobster, you got crab. Really good. You can taste the seafood and it's not too creamy. Would this make it on your gram? 
Of course. I only post the weird food, and I've definitely posted food from here multiple times. We're about to go to Chucker Cherries for some chocolate covered cherries. So we're a family owned cherry company out of Eastern Washington. We work with local farmers in the area to get all these cherries off the trees. And from there, we dry them up with hot air only and then cover them in different blends of gourmet chocolate. The bean cherry, uh, it's a little more tangy than sweet. Shout out to Microsoft. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Easily the most popular non cherry item that we have. It's so good. You can taste the coffee flavor. That's, that's really good. That's like, this is like candy. We're number two producer of sweet cherries. Turkey has number one, I believe. But cherries are such part of like Northwest. So like whenever like cherry season hits here, it's always huge. Turns out big crowds. The next stop we're going to is Beecher's Handmade Cheese. All right, now we are outside of Beecher's Handmade Cheese where they make cheese fresh and daily and you can actually watch them through this window right here. It is a mixture between Gruyere and cheddar cultures. We're gonna start with those cheese curds. It's like pre-cheese. Oh. This is kinda like eating an eraser. Way tasty. <laughs> yeah. It kinda like crumbles in your mouth. It almost has a rubbery taste at first, yeah. but then it breaks down really fast. Close. You age this 15 to 18 months and then you get the flagship chair. So this is on a wow. honey oat cracker. So good. This is like one of my most favorite cheeses to get in Seattle. I never really had these many thoughts about cheese, but now that I'm eating it, the texture changes and therefore the taste changes. What's your favorite type of cheese? Nacho cheese. Nacho cheese. So we're gonna have that. Now. A whole. This is our mac and cheese. That's right. So it's world famous. It got famous here locally in Seattle. Martha Stewart. She found about this mac and cheese and she gave uh, the owner a call. She said, hey Kurt, come to my TV show, make a famous mac and cheese. He ends up going on the show, but he doesn't make this version. He makes a different version. They don't know the wiser. Wow. Right. He flips it on her. Bait and switch. You know, I taste that pepper. I taste the smokiness. That's definitely different than your regular uh, mac and cheese. It's like cheddar based or American cheese based. Nah. So we're walking through the market. I see a bunch of tulips. Growing up, a very Northwest experience is going with my dad and the family up to the Tulip Festival. And there's tons and tons of tulips there. I went like three times in my life. My dad, he loves like yards and flowers, but we went to the Tulip Festival a lot. This is how Northwest I am. All right, now we are outside of Poroski. Poroski having one of the longest lines in all of Pike Place. And a lot of people are familiar with pierogies and pierogies. What is the difference between those two? The difference between a pierogi, though, it's baked. Oh mm. man, I could see eating just one of these and being good like for lunch. And that's really hearty, man. Cinnamon cardamom. Kind of a braid, if you will. Kind of twisted there. That's a really good cinnamon twist. It's kind of citrus. So we had a lot of good food on this food crawl so far, but. Seattle's very much known for its seafood. And every time someone visits Seattle, I always tell them, yo, we got really good, affordable seafood up here. So one of the most iconic parts of Pike Place Market is fish throwing, especially salmon. And so I think today we might get to see a little bit of the fishmongers in action. The, the story is the owner was getting a bag of clams for someone. And he was just like, hey, and he just tossed it over the counter. So the toss wasn't like super dramatic. It wasn't really a long toss. Anyway. But really, that's where it all started. Oh, that's so literally for convenience reasons you guys stole the fish because it's fast exactly you, you ready to ready to do could, could I, could I catch I'm trying to catch some fish man it's dying I think we gotta hit up a seafood restaurant next, man. Where are we going? We're gonna go over to Edda's Seafood Restaurant. What do we got here? So this is a Dungeness Crab King. Woo! Right here from Edda's at, uh, it's a Tom Douglas joint. Tom is like a three-time James Beard Warwick chef, Iron Chef champion. He's kind of like- Iron Chef America. Iron Chef America. <laughs> Which is not bad. Yep. He's okay. probably the most celebrated chef in Seattle and Pacific Northwest. Wow, okay, so I got a, I got a high expectation for these crab cakes. Yeah. Front. Cheers. Cheers. You can see all the crab meat. There's no filler. It's so good. That's not really a crab patty. I feel like it's literally like a crab ball. It's just being held together by the crust, and there's really nothing else. Like, look at all those 
the shredded crab right there, the stringy. You know how when you pull a crab out, it kind of shreds? So the crab cakes were actually the last thing that we're having on this tour, but how are we finishing them off, Justin? These are a John Boy Florida Soul Sea Salt Caramel. The sea salt definitely like balances it out, so it's not like overly sweet, and you just get a little bit of that saltiness. I really like the texture too. It's not too chewy and it's not hard. We're at Oriental Mark Grocery Kitchenette. They do Filipino style plate lunches. The Apostle family has been running it for three generations. Auntie Lai is the main cook here. Uh, she's here every day. She don't take a day off. Kanji is one of my favorite foods, man. It's good comfort food. Do you ever make it with a right. thousand year old egg in here? No, because that's the Chinese version. If you want that, you have to bring your own egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk it over from Chinatown. Yeah. <laughs> no fancy. This is just good food. Nowadays, you're starting to see farmers markets in New York, LA, different neighborhoods all around the country. But their model is this place because we are the longest consecutive run farmers market in this great nation. So that pretty much wraps up our Pike Place food tour. It was super informative. Thank you, Justin, hey, man. Anytime. Right. Shout out to Saver Seattle if you guys are looking for some tours. Come but, join uh, me sometime. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Thank all you these local me. foodies and yappies here. What was your major takeaway? You know, you having been to Pike Place, but I feel like we experienced it on a different level. One thing that I would say is a great takeaway is the fact that Pike Place Market isn't just for tourists. It's one of the few tourist attractions that locals actually frequent on the weekends. Favorite thing that we ate today? Yeah. It's probably gonna be between the Broshki or probably Elinos Greek yogurt. Elinos and chowder. All right, definitely the donut from Daily Dozen and the clam chowder were delicious. I know it's cliche to say this, but you gotta come to Pike Place. It is a place that is unique. And yes, this farmer's market is pushing the standard of farmer's markets around the United States and North America. So that's really cool to know. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video about Pike Place Market. I hope you guys learned something. It was really fun to shoot. And shout out to our sponsor, Audible. Check out audible.com slash phone gross or text phone gross to 500, 500 to start your free trial right now. Super easy. I am actually listening to Damon John, Rise and Grind. So he's from Shark Tank, and he also started the clothing line FUBU from back in the day. So it's super relevant to what we do. It's about persistence and entrepreneurship, and it's just really inspirational right now. The link is down below. And to be honest, even if you don't want to listen to an entire book, they actually have book summaries, and they have a bunch of other original content too. It's been helpful to me already, so definitely check it out. And until next time, I'm out. Peace. I'm really glad that it stopped raining. It was perfect for this video, and thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Justin, shout out to Nelson, shout out to Sonia and Tiffany. Check out all their links down below. Follow them. They are local Seattle foodies. Definitely, if you guys are trying to get in the scene, check them out. And until next time, everybody, we out. Peace.